Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to another exciting episode of Psychology Talks. And this is well, this is going to be one of my favorite episodes because we're going to talk about consciousness. And this topic has been close to my heart since, um, since years. And I would say that since the quote that I read a uh, long time back when I was very, very young. And the quote is that, I think, therefore, I am. This is the quote from René Descartes. And when I read that quote, uh, that quote, it got me into deep thinking. And that was the beginning that when I got into or I developed my interest in philosophy, I, I was so surprised to actually, or I was so, I would say, amazed to read that quote that, what does that mean? I think therefore I am. So is it all in my head or is it the reality? What exactly going on around this? So then I started reading a lot about what exactly this is. And then I got into this idea of consciousness. And uh, this is like the more you read, the more you get fascinated, the more you get like, Fabergasted. I, it's literally, it opens up the, uh, the Pandora's box of questions that what exactly it is, what it is, and, and you just de- get lost into it. But it's the journey that actually, I think one must take to find out that what is it? Who am I? What is going on around us? So in just, I would say a little bit of summary, I'll say the consciousness is very difficult to explain. It's the basic experience which everyone has and everyone goes through it. But when you ask them what it is, it's very, very difficult to come explain. And that's why today's guest is someone who has the same passion to understand what consciousness is. And he's been teaching uh, a lot of people about self-awareness, deep meditation, and he's the master of consciousness architecture is a hard thing a unified field beyond theory and framework a living mutual medicine to unplug unlock and unify for new art he is also a sound and consciousness architecture architect and a dream author let's welcome patrick somko hello patrick thank you so much for joining us today it's an honor to have you with us Hello, Ambrin. It's such a pleasure. Yeah, the, the fascination and enthusiasm for consciousness. It's just so big that it doesn't fit anywhere. And it's so beautiful to share that with you. So I want to say first, thank you. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for being here today. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming here. And I'm sure that our discussion is going to be really, very interesting. So like i gave a little bit of introduction about you about myself that how i got into this this i would say this fascinating topic and so tell our audience uh, about yourself that what is your journey what wh- how you got got into this field why are you pursuing this and what obstacle you faced when you joined this field so tell us a little bit about yourself yeah, it almost feels like consciousness is a, is a field that fascinates me for lifetimes. Mm-hmm. And surely it has fascinated me from being a little boy. So I would like yeah. to climb up the trees really high because I wanted to see and be conscious to what was beyond. I would walk in nature and it's literally, I, you know, I entered portals and I could see trees and nature in a very different way. And so consciousness just fascinated me in the sense of it was so vast. There was so much to it, you know, from the psychology to the philosophy. And like you, philosophy was my first step into that. And then later on on my journey, of course, I figured the key is the heart. uh, The heart is the key to expand that consciousness and kind of bringing it all together. 
So why the mind is surely the exit, the access point, I think, so I am. Yeah. But when we come into the heart, it's like it opens up all the different layers into the soul, into all aspects that we are. So this is a little bit my story philosophy, psychology, then I came into Advaita Vedanta, which is the non-duality, which is all the self-inquiry, who am I, which goes into the heart. The yoga was also very important, because in yoga you also deal with consciousness. In psychology, what fascinated me, maybe one of the most interesting things in consciousness for me was spiral dynamics, Claire Graves. I trained a lot in that. I, I was just so excited, still excited about it. And finally, of course, coming through with my own consciousness architecture. My background in a nutshell, obstacles. As a child, I was ob obviously often a weird guy because I talk about things that were maybe outside what we could see or what was real for some people. I had different senses. On my journey, lots of questions. These were mainly my obstacles. <laughs> yeah, I can understand. I can. I mean, I can so much relate to it that when you say that ops, these uh, uh, questions are actually. I think these are the questions that lead us to where we are going. So yeah, yeah. And I want to add one more thing on that on that quest to consciousness. We had a lovely guru here a couple of years ago, early 2020 from, from India, but he's actually in New Zealand. Okay. And um, I was always like questioning, what am I? What, what am I here? What is this all about? And he said, oh, your field is heart consciousness. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. And what does it mean? And he said, it's for you to find out. Typical gurus. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. I have to say that since 2020, I feel for me consciousness became more accessible to myself, also in regards to sharing. Okay, okay. So I um, there are lots of actually people are joining in and they're saying hi uh, from different um, like from across the globe. So um, uh, welcome to everyone who has joined from across the globe. Please feel free to add any question, and uh, so we'll just answer your question in the during the show. So now coming back to the discussion, you you said that you know like you you had a lot of question, and you you know like the kind of people who have questions are also seen a bit of weird, uh, and uh, so like at at that point in time when you wanted to pursue your career in this field. Did you find any um, resistance from the people that you stopped you from taking up this field, or was it easy for you, or you said, or you didn't listen to them? Um, I listened, but in the end, I, I pursued my own path. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have, in a way, you have the, the, the psychology that can be limited, doesn't have to be. You know, they said, oh, you should do this in consciousness. Then in yoga, they said, you should do this, you know. And of course, I was also in what very much and still very much involved in the shamanic world. And they say, you should do this. So for me, the real obstacle was all the things of consciousness that came to me to kind of bring them together. You know, to build a yeah. bridge and actually find the similarities. Where do they actually meet? It is not about having one mindset of consciousness. This is not my path anyway. For me, it was making that link. What does it mean in psychology? What does it mean in shamanic praxis? What does it mean in philosophy? What does it mean for yoga or non-duality? And so for me, the consciousness and the obstacle was to bring it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First journey. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, so what is your take on what is consciousness? What do you think it is? As you, as you know, this is a very difficult question for all of us to answer. Yeah. For me, consciousness is really the awareness of the conscious, the unconscious and the subconscious or the superconscious, depending what tradition you come from and how you want to bring it together. 
So the conscious is more related to what we see, what we feel, what we taste. So more the things related to the senses, but also the consciousness that is controllable through the mind. The unconscious is more what is hiding. That can, of course, go then into psychology and healing and all of these things that we know. And maybe we are here to figure more out about the unconscious. Yeah. And for me, the super conscious, which is also equal to heart consciousness, is for me to unlock the wholeness of consciousness and who we are. Yeah. That's the easiest definition I can give you or view yeah. that I have. Yeah, it's, it's, I think, beautifully you have explained it, that uh, how consciousness at the different level, yeah, yeah. so this is a very, uh, I, I would say that, of course, as you said, that consciousness is not easy to explain. And for centuries, <laughs> philosophers, scientists, they've been trying and they've just adding their their way of thinking, their way of defining. And that's what exactly we are doing here. So you defined it actually quite well that, you know, first of all, I think this is the first level of uh, consciousness that that we get aware of through, uh, through the senses, like, you know, these five senses that whatever, like we see, whatever we get, anything any information that we get from like the touch smell sound or these things and then we get aware of it that okay this is happening but then there is a lot happening beyond this and that's exactly when we want to find out that what is this going on that's how i think we 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 step beyond or we increase we the level of consciousness that what is happening around us, what is happening in the universe. And then like, you know, you go deeper and deeper. And the, the, the more you expand your consciousness, you get more awareness. But then again, when we get awareness and when, then we get again, a lot of questions about it, that what exactly it is, are we thinking or is it all this, the wherever the awareness are we getting is it are we getting this awareness in our mind or these perceptions are all you know um processed in our mind or somewhere else because you know when you start thinking about it you just said that um you get the sense of touch you know but the touch itself doesn't mean anything it actually processed in your brain right and then you get the feeling that okay so you become aware of the touch not by the touch itself but actually the touch that is processed by the brain and then it leads us to question ourselves that was the touch or, or was there or not it was or it was just the information processed by our brain or exactly so like these are the questions just keeps on coming to our mind and then we decide that okay what's going on so anyways we can go on and on and questioning that what is going on and how you can see that what exactly it is uh now moving to the discussion uh in your opinion how important it is to actually know or to seek the information or see the knowledge about consciousness is it i mean is it really does it matter to find out to go and seek those questions which are not even answerable or should we just leave it what is the benefit why should one go for it yeah well i feel it is important to see beyond mm -hmm. personally beyond is really the key is it useful for people? Yes, I, I feel it is useful because it gives answers that come maybe out of resonance and not necessarily, you know, the prescription of other people. It gives yeah. answers to our life, to not only why we are here, but how we are here. And I feel it, it, it literally takes us beyond and gives us an opportunity to see life from a different perspective. So for me, consciousness, it's not about following Advaita and, and saying I'm only the observer and 
you know, all these things are happening, but I'm, I'm just the opposite. It's not about that. Yes. You know, this is just the words and the, the understanding that goes with it. The real benefit I see in, in, in living in consciousness and expanding one's consciousness is you're making a different sense of life a different sense of your work, a different sense of your being, of your mission in the world. So consciousness for me is in a way the hidden, the hidden key to understand one's life. How is that? Yes, yes, I absolutely love this <laughs> because um, a lot of people do ask, ask me this question that why do we actually should go for this uh, to find out consciousness and actually i you you're spot on when you said that you know we are not just observer and i really really don't like this because a lot of people i i've read it a lot in 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 philosophy books and some other books that you know we are here to witness the experience actually this this bothers me to be honest a lot that you know okay. we are not just the i mean I, I don't want to be just the bystander witnessing all this event rather than i like want to be someone to actually um, be in power to change the, whatever is happening be in control rather than you know just being an observer it is very important i think um to surrender to all these things that whatever is happening we just sometimes need to observe but but this surrender means to understand to be i think more in power because I, this is kind of an, um, I would say, ir ironic that when we surrender to these, these supreme authorities, something, actually that is the time we actually gain more power. And that's how it is, I feel, that when we, we let go the urge of having control, it is exactly the time that we are more powerful. And I think that is the reason why we should go and understand what consciousness is or what's going on around us. Because, you know, unless we don't understand it, we remain, we will remain just the bystander. We will remain just an observer. I yes. think that's my theory. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I really love what you say because you cannot just be an observer. You have this body, you have this life. Yeah. You are part of this. And at the same time, I also love the way how you say, if I surrender the power, and, and I want to add something here. I feel when you really surrender the power, the identity and all these, which is beautiful, what you really gain is a conscious choice. Yes. And, and, and this is the true power because it's not power over me controlling my life. I feel this is power to be who I truly am yeah you know and be an integral part in that whole world in that whole shift in in everything yeah so i really love how we dance here a little bit how how you bring your experiences and what resonates and what doesn't resonate and this is very much the key what i what i'm about to bring it together without being yeah. one or the other yeah. it's not a singular state no absolutely yeah and, and you said like you're very much um into a spiral uh this uh, consciousness right so uh, i i don't know much about it so maybe you can just educate me and the audience that what exactly it is and you're an expert on this so tell us a little bit about yeah it. so sometimes when you're an expert you don't know how to make it concise <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, Spiral dynamics comes from actually a psychologist who was also yeah. a philosopher and whatever. Carol yeah, he's very great. He lived a long time ago, not so long, in, in the 1900s, whatever. But um, Carol Graves actually said that humanity is going through stages of and, and levels of consciousness. And he was yeah. trying to see our life conditions as as the consciousness that we're experiencing. So if we are the power lords, or if we are victims to nature, or if we are in harmony, if we are, if we live in a consciousness of achievement, if we're living in a consciousness of harmony, and he 
he basically said there's two tiers of consciousness. So one that he calls like the lower. And he said that there's an opportunity for humanity. And this is about now that we can actually evolve into a second tier that brings things together, that brings that integral consciousness. So we can have all the positive aspects of the lower consciousness, if you want to call it that way. And we have an opportunity to take this into a higher consciousness. So in essence, this is what excited me about Carol Graves and spiral dynamics. It is also shown as a spiral. And he says, you cannot force anyone into another level of consciousness. It's a matter of readiness. Yes. Life yeah. conditions may force us, mm. but as you said before so beautifully, it's when we surrender the control, we gain the choice and the real power. So in a nutshell, this is how I can say this is about spiral dynamics. It can go anywhere. I used to do it in companies. You can test it and all these beautiful things. But in a nutshell, this is how consciousness and spiral dynamics come together. Yeah, I, I mean, I had a little bit of background uh, uh, about this. And um, I, I read the one of novel based on this. I don't remember the exactly name of that novel. It's something said about seven. Um, I really don't recall the name of that novel, but it was based on the same philosophy. And it says that like, the humanity evolves and um, at each level. And, and it was such a beautiful novel that it that novel shows that, you know, at every stage like you the humanity evolves over the period of time that at which level we are and uh, it also says that like it, uh, it 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 is a sort of a repetitive cycle so you know like you go reach to the highest level and then you go down and then it goes it's it's like a cyclical so yeah. um it's 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 amazing actually to yeah. see that so how there's collectively two, go. Yeah. yeah. No, so there's two lines, one or one, two directions. You can say you're going back down or you're evolving and you spiral out. Oh, okay. So okay. When an opportunity to spiral out right now and to go into higher consciousness is happening now from 2012. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And how you get to know about this, that which are we going up or are we going down? <laughs> what? humanity or humankind has a choice yeah it comes back to choice so if we can and he talks about if we can go from the ego and the self-interest into the collective self mm -hmm. at the same time staying unique because spiral dynamics is also about one part of of the evolution is personal and the other one is collective mm -hmm. if we can be both the unique and the collective then we actually can have an evolution of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, uh, Ken Wilber, who is into integral theory, that is in a way based or similar to Carol mm -hmm. Gray. He said that technology can take us back down the spiral or yeah. into okay. a higher consciousness. So there is many different theories, views, lenses of perception. Me, I love to go, of course, into the next level, in the next tier, as it's called in Spiral Dynamics. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. How beautiful that book was, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's basically, it's so amazing that uh, how collectively people evolve. I mean, this is also it's something um, very interesting. Like, if we look at the like few hundred years ago, it's like how people used to think collectively and now. So like it's it's been evolved from the time that when people think that, you know, uh, everything was more busy or were thinking only in a like sort of at the micro level. There was no sense of, uh, I would say, uh, collectiveness. But now overall, I feel the the consciousness level has evolved a lot and i feel a lot of people are now talking about self-awareness talking about how to connect with the self so i think 
overall, this evolution is taking us up there. But let's see that how up we can go. <laughs> and that's the question. Yeah. 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 And again, that point, as I said, I like to bring different things together. Yeah. And on that point, it's also interesting that we're seeing that even the stars, the cosmos, they mm -hmm. are changing. And in a way, if you then relate that astrology, astronomy to cultural anthropo anthropology and philosophy, you actually see how the energy of the stars is influencing that collective and unique consciousness. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Everything is connected. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I really love that perspective because I, exactly this is how i see or i try to you know make sense of the world by you know connecting things we need to see from astrology astronomy and like physics psychology to make connection with the everything because i think each of these sciences or the fields of studies are not just in isolation they are connected they, like everything is connected and and that's how i feel we need to make sense of the entire world around us that what is happening if there is a, uh, there is a star let's say I, I actually think a lot about this that how come a billions of years or uh, light years far a, a, a star is actually burning and you know it's the light is coming here and what is actually the purpose of that thing you know that is happening maybe but i think these other things are not i would say just not happening for the sake of happening this is all interrelated that star which is there and the light which we are receiving maybe after billions of light year later there is certain purpose of it it was there for uh, it was part of the system you know so yeah. Each and everything that is happening has a direct or indirect effect. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's the beauty of the world. And then, then we actually, when we think about all these things, I, I get actually lost in my thoughts that when we're trying to make sense that what is happening here, how it's affecting us, what is this? I mean, and it's so fascinating to see that, you know, eventually you, you find out that there is a connection. And there's not only a connection between the humans, but each and everything that is happening in the universe, out there, and inside us. I mean, like if you, you just see the at the so micro, so much micro level, there are things happening which we are not aware of. So it's it's amazing, and that's just the this like when we start thinking about it, that's how we start raising our consciousness level that what's happening there what's happening inside us and then we're trying to make the connection and then then i think when we raise our consciousness level we become more mature we become more self-aware so i think that's how it is yeah we could talk about this forever, but I feel it's very important that connection, what you're saying. There is a connection to how the stars are shifting. I mean, in philosophy, from the mythology, from the Greeks to the Maori, they've been seeing things in the stars. Yeah. You know, and this has always been related to what happens here on Earth. Yeah. And this is also about consciousness. And, and for me, this connectedness is also very beautiful. I don't pretend to be an astrologer, astronomer, whatever, but I love to look into the stars. And yeah. I do see that consciousness is also related and connected to the way we are able to experience consciousness. Fabulous. Yeah. Magic. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Definitely, it is magic. <laughs> when you uh, Actually, you know, uh, this is uh, one of the, like astrology and something i was like from the very beginning i was interested in so that's why i like i'm very much interested in like all the stars and palmistry and, and that's like you know these are the things like small little things have a huge impact on everyone's life and we cannot deny this fact it may not have scientific lot of um, evidence 
at this moment, but it does have a lot of connection and we may be able to find some times later <laughs> through different, let's say, scientific um, uh, knowledge and some more evidences. So yeah, we can go on. So um, you are also talking about the heart sink uh, thing. So there is a connection between, as you say, mind and the heart. So what is this exactly connection? Like we, we know that <clears throat> when we think about consciousness, we always think about mind, but, but heart has a very huge role in finding out what's happening around or in, in guiding us in certain way. So what exactly this is it for you? What is the heart sync connection? Yeah, so the heart sync is actually when we allow things, it's that letting go of the control of the mind in a classic sense and allowing to bring the mind into the heart. This is very interesting. We have it in Advaita. We also have it in indigenous and, and shamanic studies. You connect the third eye with the visual cord and the mind with the heart. And so heart sync is really that synchronization of bringing the mind into the heart. It doesn't mean that you're not thinking at all. Mm -hmm. It just allows you to maybe open up levels of consciousness and thinking that are beyond the limitation of the rational mind. So you come more into a resonance than always just facts through the heart. For me, the heart is a key to connect. We talk about connectedness. Sometimes the mind doesn't allow us to make connectedness because it could be limited. We talk about the left and the right brain and whatever, the primitive brain of fight, fight, flee, fear and fortify. When it comes into the heart, these limitations of our brain as we know it and our mind as we know it, they kind of pass away. And we do that through meditation, through chanting, mantras, asanas, many, many different ways, even, of course, through drugs or plant medicine. Yes. What we're really trying is to come into the heart to access higher levels of consciousness through the mind. So heart sync for me is bringing all that we have into the heart to have a higher access to more than just the mind. That's yeah. as easy as I can say. <laughs> yeah, I think you explained it's again very beautifully that you know it's it's just the connection. I think it's just the harmony of our mind, body, and soul, and that's exactly it is when when we say the heart sings. So like it's it's everything in the harmony, and we go with just the flow at where it is leading us, not just rationalizing everything, because. Um, here i would just say that maybe like yes. heart is uh, I, i'd say that heart is more like emotional mm -hmm. and it, when when something that is not uh, defined by the logic or rationality so that is something that is more linked with the heart so it's it's i would say maybe a part of the brain but it's more like the harmony of everything in some th some things may not make um uh, sense but your heart is saying that you know it is right thing so like yeah. that is that happens when everything is in a line and then when we hear um, our you know intuition or something so i think that's how it is so yeah, yeah it's i see it less from the emotional side because the emotional side can trap us yes yeah it's maybe more another level maybe of emotions that are not trapping us. Same like the mind can trap us. So for me, the heart is more an intuitive side and, and it's the harmony. It's the, the key that holds it all together. But yeah. beautiful, uh, yeah. When we talk, it just happens like that. Yeah, I, actually, I agree with you. It's, mm. not, it's not emotions, it's not rationality it is intuition and that that is something that we need to uh, i have actually written in my book that how we yes. can listen to the intuition because there are lots of 
voices coming in our mind, like it's coming from the rational side, from the emotional side. And then we need to filter all these voices to listen to the intuition because listening to the intuition is always right thing because that will always lead you to the right uh, direction. And uh, I feel that the one thing is the voice of intuition is always very subtle and consistent. Yes. It's something like if, for example, if if you meet with a person, let's say, and your heart say or intuition says that is not the right person, that voice will remain the same. It was not gonna. It's not the first impression. It's, no. it, this voice will remain the same no matter how many times you meet with that person and you try to rationalize that that person is like maybe have a very huge titles, a big bank, a bank balance or whatever, every impressive thing that could possibly be. But if your intuition is saying that person isn't right for you, so that voice will not change after several meetings. So that voice you need to uh, listen to. And cultivate. So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So the way you are talking, it's almost like for me, the intuition could be the voice of the heart. Yeah. That takes you into that resonance of your whole consciousness. So yeah. that you have a conscious choice to say, yeah, okay, maybe I need to talk to this person for whatever reason, but really I don't resonate and that's okay. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Very really true. So, <laughs> yeah, anyways, so I think I, we can, as you know, we can go on for hours, for days on this topic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the thing is, this is like the show has a limited time and I'm afraid that I reach the end of the show. So before we close the show, what one advice or what one uh, thing that you want to, or what one, any suggestion you want to give to our audience today, maybe so to, I mean, to, uh, to become more aware or have more consciousness about, or to maybe develop interest in the consciousness or maybe whatever your experience is, something one, uh, the key experience of your life? First of all, we are the masters of our consciousness and we have a choice to break what doesn't serve and to build what we can. So this is also the consciousness architecture. But I have one little advice. It's dear, like the word dear, but you have, for D, you have dear. For A, you have a tune, a tune to that wholeness of consciousness. Remember is the R, who you truly are and emerge wow. come out wow. let your light shine so this mm -hmm. i would like to give as a final advice for today dear wow. this is amazing i really love it i mean dare to understand consciousness <laughs> i would say <laughs> dare to you know more find out more about it it's, it's amazing so thank you so much for sharing your experience and uh, uh, sharing your knowledge with us. I'm sure our audience must have enjoyed it. And I enjoyed a lot, <laughs> even if they have not enjoyed it. <laughs> but I'm sure this is, uh, they must have enjoyed it a lot. So um, uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with Patrick, please get in touch through LinkedIn. He's, you're very, uh, he's very active on LinkedIn. Anywhere else, you uh, how they can reach out to you? Well, on the website, okay. www.sonkosworlds.net. Okay. They find it also on the LinkedIn. Just okay. click it there. We also have a YouTube channel, Sonic Sonkos. It's very easy to find on LinkedIn. Or just yes. DM me and I let you know how you can unlock the worlds of the heart. Yeah, sure. I will also share all the links in the in this comment after the show. So whoever wants to reach out, they can uh, connect with you. So thank you so much. It was amazing discussion and I loved every bit of it. So thank you so much. And thanks to the uh, audience who ever joined from different part of the world and uh, join and listen to our discussion. So thank you so much and have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much, Ambrin and everybody who is here today. Okay.